What we're going to be going over here is governmental accounting, and we're going to look at the proprietary funds. That would include here the enterprise fund and the internal service fund. And we're going to be focusing in here on the internal service fund here for our example here. But when we're talking about governmental accounting, we have our governmental funds, and then along with those governmental funds, we have to set up accounting control groups, and that would be for general capital assets and any general long-term obligations. And what we're going to be looking at here is this proprietary fund here. That's one of the governmental funds. We're going to have like general funds, special purpose funds, capital projects, and so forth. But we're going to be looking at the proprietary funds here and looking at specifically the internal service fund here. But just to make a point here, for these accounting control groups for your uh, long-term assets, your capital assets and long-term obligations, when you're talking about your typical governmental funds, those uh, I, capital assets and uh, long-term debt and obligations are counted outside of the fund groups here. And um, when you're talking about your proprietary fund and also the fiduciary fund here, uh, those capital assets, and if there is any long-term obligations, they're accounted within the fund groups themselves here. Okay, so let's go on and talk about this, our proprietary funds. Now, those would include here our enterprise fund, and also our internal service funds. And we could have a number of those funds in, in for our uh, governmental unit here. Okay, and we're going to really focus in on the internal service funds. But first off, what do these funds do here? This On these proprietary funds, that's where the governments account for their business type activities. These funds are to be self-supporting, like a commercial business. The accounting procedures resemble that of a commercial business. The funds carry their own fixed assets and long-term debt, and any government, uh, governmental budgetary where they got, you have to set up your governmental budgetary accounts, and any encumbrance accounts for expenditures and contracts uh, and so forth here are not used when we're talking about our proprietary funds. These funds use normal accrual accounting. So let's just briefly go over what they are here. So for our enterprise fund here, uh, that were where we uh, the goods or services are provided to the general public. That would be like utilities here, the water utility, electric utility, uh, having a public parking a lot here, municipal landfills, airports, and so forth. So enterprise funds, there's where the uh, governmental body here is providing goods or services to the general public. Now, this is for our internal service fund. This is where the goods or services are provided to other agencies of the government or other governmental units here. So for internal service fund, they're pro that's providing, again, any goods or services to other uh, uh, departments here within the governmental body here. So like if you've got a city here, uh, the internal service fund is going to provide goods or services to the departments within that city body or that governmental unit the city. And those could include like a computer center, central computer center, central printing, central purchasing, a central garage, any any risk financing and self-insurance activities. Those are base, just some basic examples here. So internal service fund provides goods and services to uh, agencies or departments within the governmental unit. Okay, and then other, one other thing here, these enterprise funds, they have restricted assets and current liability, where, where the current liabilities are to be paid out of the restricted assets. And those would be like the restricted assets would be for cash and investments upon which some limitations have to be imposed. And you use, you'd use specifically designated accounts to the ensure the segregation of any of these cash or investments as restricted assets. But when we're dealing with the internal service fund, we shouldn't be concerned with these restricted assets here because the internal service fund is likely not to be issuing any long-term debt. Okay, so let's go up and look at our example here. Okay, again, this we're just going to go over a brief example here for the internal service fund so you understand what's going on here. Now, usually you do not issue bonds that result in restrictions here to the internal service fund. You would do that oh, through an enterprise fund, but likely not with the internal service fund. Again, the internal service fund should be self-sustaining, sustaining, and it depends on dollars charged with the services rendered here. It acts like a commercial business here. Uh, you're not trying to make a profit, uh, and you're 
not really uh, get retaining any cash here based on those services, only to support the in, um, the function that's going on here. You don't want to accumulate a bunch of cash here in the internal service fund. All you want to do is charge uh, the other departments that are using uh, what we've talked about here, any like the computer center, printing, central printing, purchasing, and so forth. Now, the example we're going to go through here is just a self insured The city is going to be a self-insured here, and the city sets aside some dollars here for potential claims in the internal service fund here. So, what do we have to deal with when we're talking about this internal service fund? We're going to have our other governmental funds. Those are going to be the customers here. Those are going to be the departments within those other governmental funds. And those could be like the general fund, special projects, capital projects, and so forth. And what we would do here with these governmental funds, this is where we're going to have inner fund services, and they're going to be expensed here in the customers or the governmental funds as the customers here to the internal service fund. So we're going to be looking at our transfers here uh, between our governmental funds. So just say, for example, we've got our governmental funds as our customers here. So what they're going to do here, and we're going to deal with just looking at it in terms of insurance premiums here, but it could be for printing service, essential computing and so forth. And the but we'll just look at it here in terms of that uh, those insurance premiums. So what the uh, what they're going to do here in your governmental fund? Let's just say we're going to have our general fund here and some utility fund here. They're going to be paying some insurance premiums here to the internal service fund. The internal service fund is going to manage the uh, claims here for any insurance claims here for the city. So what you would do here, and I've shown it in T-account form here, and when you're dealing with governmental accounting, you have to be concerned with the titles of each of these accounts here. And you understand through the title here what's going on, but they have to be plain, a clay, plainly detailed here in the title what, what, what these accounts stand for. So say, for, again, for those premiums here, what we would do, uh, general fund and utility fund are going to pay insurance premiums to the internal service fund. So what they would do here, they'd have due to the internal service fund here, and they would list it for the premium. So this is going to be our transfers here. And then along with that here, uh, using normal accrual accounting here in these, uh, this, this would be for within the fund groups themselves here, they're not they're using modified accrual accounting here. But when we get down to an internal service fund, this is where you're going to use normal accrual accounting. But going back to our example here, general fund is going to pay credit there due to the internal service fund here for 120000 for their insurance premiums for the year. And you, utility fund here is going to credit 80000 So they're going to pay the internal service fund 80000 So 120, so as expenditures here, in the general fund here, you would debit that for 120000 In utility fund, their expenditures are going to be debited here for $80,000. So the point is here, with these inner fund services, they're expensed here within the funds themselves, whatever fund you're dealing with here. Now, we've made our expenditures here in, uh, in our, for the governmental funds here. Now let's look at our collections here. So for an internal service fund, we're going to be looking at our collect they're going to collect this premium and they're going to pay the claims here for the year here on these insurance claims so in the internal service fund this is where you're going to do do from other funds for and label it here for the insurance premium so whatever these in, uh, governmental funds here or their inner fund services that they're paying for they're going to be expensed here but what they come down to the internal service fund this is where we're going to recognize our revenue here so First off here, you put an internal service fund due from the other funds for the insurance premiums, and you'll debit that here for the total amount of those insurance premiums. In this case, it's $200,000. $120,000 from the general fund, $80,000 here from the utility fund. So debit your due from other funds. That's we're going to have to get that money from the other funds here. That's the build amount here. And this is where we, again, use normal accrual accounting here when you're talking about this part proprietary funds that in this one specifically the internal service fund. So debit your uh, $200,000 for the build amount here and then your revenues you're going to credit those for $200,000. So that is the revenue realized here. Just to make a point here again uh, going back to our 
our funds, our fund, our regular governmental funds here. We recognize those expenditures for those insurance premiums, and then in the internal service fund, we're recognizing revenues for those insurance premiums that the other governmental funds are paying, or there's departments within those governmental so governmental funds are paying to the internal service fund. Okay, so build them out. We set, we've got that taken care of at revenues. Now, when we actually receive the cash here, the cash transfer that's made here from those other funds, uh, other governmental funds, we would credit, we reduce our other funds here, say we receive the total $200,000 worth. So we're not going to have any due from the other funds now. Then we would go and we're going to debit or increase our cash here by $200,000. Again, in, in the internal service fund. Okay, so then let, we'll just look at a basic example here for the self-insurance activity. That's all we're looking at. Okay, now we come along here and we actually have expenses. This is where we're going to recognize our expenses here for any claims and judgments here. So the internal service fund is taking care of all the self-insurance activity here. So all the insurance activity for any claims and judgments is going through this internal service fund. The other funds sent their money in to the internal service or internal service fund and the internal service fund is going to take care of any of claims and judgments. Okay, so they collected the money here on their premiums for the year here. Now they're going to say, for example, they recognized uh, as an expense here, $150,000 worth of claims and judgments. So we debit, we increase our expense here by $150,000. Now we would go up here in our cash account and we actually only paid out for claims and judgments, say $130,000. So we debt a credit or reduce our cash here for $130,000. Now we had our expenses at $150,000 here. That's what we realized here, normal accrual accounting, but our cash, we only paid out $130,000 on those claims. So we have to set up that liability account here for the, the claims and judgments. We're still liable for $20,000. So. Uh, this is really what we're looking at, what we realized here as claims and judgment versus what was paid up here. So we're going to have to credit our liability account here for $20,000. Just for our basic example here, we had a debit for our expenses of $150,000. We had a credit here for our cash, reduction in our cash, $130,000. So we need another credit here as a liability. Uh, of $20,000. Just a basic example here that we went through. Now just remember this internal service fund, you know, that could be for a computer center, some printing, central purchasing, and you account for it as a, like a regular commercial business. Uh, and the point is that when, when we looked at, the point is here, uh, let's make, let's make, go down here and make this point here. The net income from the internal service fund should be sufficient to allow for replacement of any capital assets or payment of any risk-related losses. You do not accumulate any large balances. Uh, again, what we mean here is that our revenues less our expenses here in the internal service fund, they should really balance out. We're really looking not to have any, we want this, this fund should be self-supporting. It should be charging the other departments or the other funds for what the, uh, Act, the actual cost here for any goods or services provided, but you're not trying to make any profit here in your internal service fund. Your revenues should really, equal, your expenses should really equal your revenues here. You're not trying to accumulate any uh, net income here if you can in the internal service fund. You're trying to leave that money sit in you in the uh, regular fund groups here, that'd be the general fund, special purpose fund, capital projects, and so forth. You, you're moving those monies in here for whatever service you're providing to the inter internal service fund, and you recognize them as revenues here, but you're also looking at the expenses here. You're also having to pay uh, your internal service, you're paying your expenses out of the internal service fund for whatever the service would be here. So the key is, don't really accumulate any, uh, you don't want to make any great profit out of it. But at the same time, you don't want to lose any money. So you have to keep your revenues here up to the point where they, they're equal to the expenses for whatever you're dealing with. And then one other point here, this internal service fund, again, uses normal accrual accounting and the fund carries its own fixed assets and related 
depreciation. So if you've got you've got an activity here like a central garage or whatever, a computer center, it would be carrying its own fixed assets, and you'd also be depreciating those fixed assets. So if you're coming up with your correct uh, expenses that you'd have, and uh, any long-term debt would be unusual here when you're talking about the internal service fund. Okay, so that'll pretty much summarize our topic here, but maybe let's just go up and make one last point here. Okay, so just go over it one more time. These governmental funds, those are re those other governmental funds here are our customers. Those would be like the departments within the funds here, and they have uh, they would recognize this as expenditures for any of those services that are be, per, being provided by the internal service fund. So any of those inner fund services here in your regular governmental funds here, those would be recognized as expenditures here. And then when you move down through your internal service fund, who's actually providing the service here, they're going to recognize them as revenues here. And then the internal service fund also recognizes the expenses here that they have for those services that they're providing here. And uh, then that that's that's really what this internal service fund again is providing any goods or services to these other agencies of the, of the government here. And when with the internal service fund again you want to make sure it's self-supporting here and it should be a taking care of any replacement costs and capital assets, depreciation and so forth would go on in a service sent, sent in the internal service fund for whatever uh, service it's providing here to these other governmental bodies. Okay, so that'll really summarize our topic here. And one other last thing, just remember this internal service fund, it's using normal accrual accounting, uh, not modified, whereas your uh, governmental funds use modified accrual accounting. But that'll summarize our topic.